Spring is here. I'm so excited. I think spring and fall might be my favorites and probably because of the colors and bloom and all that stuff and the leaves falling. Four years ago, was it four years ago, cameraman? I wrote that, yeah. Yeah, I got a chance to do the cover of Nails magazine. I did spring flowers. I want to redo those today a little differently. Check them out. Let's get started. Okay, before I start anything, I'm going to start buffing up the nail and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. Just going to gently prep the natural nail. So four years ago, things are very different for me four years later. Four years ago, I was in LA doing the cover for the magazine. That was so much fun. I met some really cool people, very talented people. And I decided to do a spring nail, just spring flowers. What's better for spring than flowers? So full circle. Now I'm in a position where I'm doing nails on my YouTube channel with my own first spring flower collection. This little bottle is loaded with flowers and that's what's inspiring me to do this set of nails again. You know how you do a set of nails and you start thinking about, oh, I could have done this, I could have done, I could have done, this would be cool. <laughs> that's sort of what you do, especially when you do it for something like a magazine cover, you know, you kind of second guess yourself. So I'm gonna get a chance to do this. The set I did was really long. And yes, some people are, you know, very trendy nails right now are super long, but it's not for everybody and it's not super practical. So we're gonna make a set of nails that is gonna be a little bit more wearable than the ones I did four years ago with all the spring flowers in them. But I'm gonna do them a bit different. Those ones I did on the magazine cover were all acrylic, but this is gonna be a combination and the difference for me too, full circle, I'm using my own products. That's been exciting, fun. <laughs> so I'm going to do a acrylic nail and then I am going to overlay it. Oh, that's another new thing. My new gel. We'll get to that. So I'm going to build an acrylic nail and then I'm going to overlay the whole thing in gel. And the reason why I like to do that is because gel is so clear. Okay, so I do have a little bit of product left in my nail here. And the reason for that is because I do want to do a full color of acrylic, at least on this finger. And I might change it up as the fingers go. I really don't know exactly what I'm going to do. All I know is that I'm going to do spring flowers with little bits of added stuff to accentuate it. I'm going to use my acrylic brush. And oh, my new bottle, my new bottle where I dispense monomer. See that? You can dispense some monomer. Okay, so I'm going to saturate me brush. This is not going to be so much about how to do beads of acrylic, but just more or less making a beautiful design. It was it was time to have a pretty designed nail. So I'm going to put a thin layer of yellow on my entire nail. And just making a very thin layer. This is a big cat here. I got it. <laughs> I, no, I didn't get it. Did I get it yet? No, no, it's Jeez. still there. Jeez. I don't have time. I, I can't right. wait too long. Acrylic is not that forgiving. Okay. So I'm just going to add a bead here, a bead here, just get it on there. If you are learning acrylic beads, I just want you to know there isn't one way to obtain acrylic beads. There's one right ratio, but there's all sorts of ways you can get a bead on there. And there is, of course, an optimum way, but you don't have to do it that way all the time. Okay, so this is just getting the color down there because I really want to get to putting down some flowers. So I have got a really good selection of flowers in this little jar. Look at this. This is incredible. Okay, so I am actually going to focus on, I'm really in the mood for that royal blue and the soft butter yellow. 
Speaking of butter yellow, did you see my other hand? How gorgeous is that? I'll show you the company. It's Coco and Claire, and it's called Soft Butter 078 if you're interested. It's gorgeous. It's not sponsored. I just wanted to tell you about it because it's so pretty. Okay, so I am going to look how many, look at the flowers. <laughs> I'll have this available on my website for you too. So the flower color that I'm interested in is this guy. Look at that one. Look at that blue. That is gorgeous. So that's my inspiration for this design with this particular yellow. What's that sound? My flowers in the background are falling. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. We're going to pretend that didn't happen and we're going to move on. Okay. <laughs> so with that blue, I'm going to pair that with orange because it's going to complement the yellow as well. So what I need to do is I'm going to get me little scissors and I'm going to grab this one, see this? That just, mm, 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 just, mm. I've got this little dish. Let me do it a little bit closer. Okay, so I am going to just cut the tiny little pieces off. I'm gonna grab this with this other hand. I need to cut, you know how scissors, you have to use whatever handed you are? Okay, so I'm gonna just cut pieces off that I want. It's delicate work. Then I'm gonna put it back in my dish there. Now, I did say that I like this color. I'm going to use that one. And, oh, I do want some leaves. See that? I'm going to cut some leaves. I guess I should have done this before I put my form on. Beneath here, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a planner. I don't think ahead like that. Okay. It's done. So I'm gonna take this off here. Oh no, the, the thinner acrylic is, the longer it takes to cure. And that thin, thin end is saying, nope, I am not ready yet. Okay, and I really like this. And let's get some yellow in there. Okay, so I'll leave that out because we still may grab from that. And but this is the little bits that I wanted. Was there any bits of blue? There are, look. So I'm going to steal some of that too. I really like those. You can get the stems too, eh? Okay, throw that back in there. Okay. Well, I think the... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I have to have some of these. What do you think? I got to have some of those. I just got this too. Okay, so let's just grab that and cut some off. love those. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use it, but I'm going to grab a soft purple flower and just throw it in there because sometimes those two go nicely together. Purple and blue, right? And it goes purple goes nice with yellow. Okay. Okay. Let's start throwing it together. Okay. I just remembered I really do want to cut the leaves of the flower too. It can't go on like that. My thumb's not that big. So there's one and two. Okay. I think I've got me colors. Now, I don't have to take the form off at this point, but I'm just gonna, just cause it's in my way. Okay. And I want to see too how much yellow is on there. Now most I'm going to cover it up with flowers and stuff, but I do want to make sure that yellow is not see-through and so thin that it's see-through. But I don't know if you can see, can you focus on that, Cameron? Hold on. I just want to brag how thin that is. And the thin matters because See how thin that is? I'll put my finger on. You can really yeah, see. It's just like, it's like paper thin. And the reason why that matters is because when you're adding layers of whatever, flowers, glitter, whatever you're doing, you do want to do it quite thin. And then what you put over top will give it its strength because you want to embed the picture, you might say, underneath this layer of protection. So we are going to apply this with acrylic. I find it's a little easier to apply these things with acrylic at times. So I think I'm going to use the big blue leaf and I grab some other glitters I've got in here. I'm going to use my clear acrylic to adhere. Now, if you did this quick enough, you could stick it to the sticky wet yellow, but I didn't. So I'm going to get a little bead of acrylic and play, just paint it on that area, just a little bit, where I'm going to put that first 
bead. I think I'm going to use the big one. And I do find these flowers tend to curve one way or the other. Whichever way it's curved, put that down on top of the nail. So right now it's curved up a little bit, if you can see. So I am going to turn it down and place the curved part into the nail. It'll just fall a little bit easier. And what I'm wanting it to do is actually stick and adhere to that layer of acrylic that I put down. So I got a little bit of monomer, see that? And I'm soaking the flower with the monomer so it's heavy and it will stay attached to that bead of acrylic I put down there. Wow, what a color. Yes, it's Isn't spectacular. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Really. So what I love about this little leaf, I don't know if you can see the detail, but you can actually see the veins mm -hmm. of the flower. Because this is real pieces of flower. There's a couple of ones that are not I just put in there for the collection in case you just wanted to have and not a real one. So there are those, but 95% of this collection is real flowers. So you can see, look at that individual little veins in there. And that little curly Q leaf. I'm not going to cover stem. anything over that. Stem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, stem. I love that. Okay, so that is like super pretty. I don't think I have enough room to put another big giant leaf on there. And I love that little curly stem. So I'm going to just go with that. Now I've got some glitters that I brought in. I found some glitters in my cupboard and I think I'm just going to add a little. I'm just going to add a little because I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. Mm, I can barely see it. I see this orangey yellow glitter. Mm, that adds a little something, doesn't it? That's a little pretty. Okay, so now I've got to bring in I'm just gonna get the tiniest little bit of monomer on my brush, just the tiniest amount. And then you can go into your acrylic, create the tiniest, tiniest bead, see that? And I'm gonna place it up in here and I'm just gonna paint it on. It's just a thin layer. Remember, the thinner acrylic is, the longer it takes to dry. And I'm gonna grab a leaf just with the wetness of my brush and I'm gonna lay it in there. And I do like to offset the leaves. This might be still wet enough down here for that to stick. Now, let me see. These flowers may not work as well as I thought because now I'll just show you. If I pick up one of these flowers and plunk it right there, I'm gonna cover my little leaf. And I, the little curly cue. I don't wanna do that. So now I'm trying to find out where would I place this to make it look good. It might not look good there. Let's check out the little orange one. It's a little bit smaller. Maybe I can fit it here. Maybe I'll try it there. Okay, let's put it down. Little bead of acrylic. That's what I'm using to adhere it. I'm gonna pick up that orange flower and place it right there. And I'm gonna get a little bit of monomer. And I'm going to saturate that flower with the monomer so it lays down, just lays flat. It's kind of cute. I kind of like that. Okay, and remember all those little tiny bits that I cut up? I love that. That's just going to just change this. Okay, so let's get... I'm just going to kind of smear everywhere I want to put some of those little tiny bits. Remember those little blue bits? that there but it's not going to stick very well so I almost feel like I'm in a hurry because I'm rushing against the acrylic to dry and you kind of are so get some yellow bits in there so cute okay I need to get a little bit of acrylic up in here with those little flowers to stick to like this it's got quite a nice stem to it That might be it. I didn't cover my curly cues still, which is good. Pretty. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this glitter. Now I'm gonna point that up a little bit, almond shape it up a little bit, so you're gonna lose a bit of that. That's pretty. 
So I had some beads out here and I had some other things, but um, I think this is just going to be really nice. That's really pretty. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to wait for this to dry, all the acrylic to dry. It takes, if you're using fast set, it takes about 60 seconds. It doesn't take long at all. If you're using um, slow set, it could take up to two minutes, right? So uh, I'm going to wait for that to completely dry, and then we're going to layer it with gel. And now, if I was doing all the fingers, I'd just go ahead and do them all. And then, of course, by the time you come back to whatever finger you started with, you're ready to go with the gel. So I'm going to clean this up, and let's do the gel. Okay, I got my gel all set up. Now, I'm going to put my new gel on. But before I do that, I have an excellent product called Bridge, and it bridges products together. So I'm going to put a thin layer of my bridge on top of this design. You don't just swipe it on, you kind of rub it in, like burnish it in, like in circles kind of thing. Just make sure it gets into everywhere. And it will help bond my gel to the acrylic. Okay, I'm just going to give that a nuke for 60 seconds. Okay, he's all ready to go. Okay, because of you guys, as my brand grows, I'm able to throw money back into it and make new products. And that's what I've done with my glass nails. I call them glass nails because you can see right through them and everything under them looks like glass. Okay, so all we need to do is open her up, cut it open. Now you can take this right off if you like. And then I'm gonna get my new gel brush and I am going to scoop some up. And now this is a thicker gel. It's easier to work with a thicker gel if you're not used to gel. The runnier it is, the harder it is. <laughs> so if it's a little bit thicker, it makes it easier to manage. So we're going to pick up not a ton, just a little bit. You can see it's quite thick if you've ever worked with gel. But I love it. it makes it so much easier. And you can just glide on the first layer real slow. Now you can start blobbing it on right away. But if you do this, gel finds gel. So if you paint a thin layer on first, the next layer will bond to it and kind of mold to it. And just make sure you cover the whole thing. Now you've got the design completely encased in there. And I'm just going to give it about a 30 second or so nuke just to hold that in place. And then we can put the big ball on top, which is going to be the structure of the nail to give it strength and look right through to the design. Okay, now I'm gonna get a big beauty bead. <laughs> just gonna get a big one. This now is gonna be my structure bead. So I'm gonna see how I'm gonna push it toward the cuticle and it'll start to stick to it. Just hit all the sides where you want it to be and then you're gonna slowly pull it toward the end of the finger. Usually it's toward you, but I'm working on it on my own hands and I work on it a bit different when it comes to camera angles and such. See how I'm just sort of pulling it down? Whatever I do though, I try not to leave a gap in between. I make sure that I always have contact with the product. Okay, so I run out. I'm gonna grab another bead. And this bead, I'm gonna find the contact point and I'm just like I'm continuing. Just going to continue right down, making sure I get all the way to the sides. Looks crazy, right? <laughs> but it's just gently coaxing the slow moving stuff into a, you know, a beautiful glass like finish. Now remember how thin we did it? So we can afford this. Okay, and with the beauty of it is, if you have any leftovers, you can just put it right back in there like that. Just make sure there's no stuff on it, no glitter, no, you know, um, 
flowers that came off or anything like that. Now I'm just going to pull down on the sides a little and make sure it comes all the way down because that's where my strength is going to be. So give it a good look all the way around. And you got the gel all the way around. Now I do see a bubble and I put that in. It looks like I probably would have put that in with my second bead. And I'm just going to pull it out. Okay, one thing I love about gel is you turn it upside down. And when you do that, it will slowly move a little to create a natural apex. And you can check it by doing this. Is that what you like? And if it's not, then hold it upside down a little bit. As long as you've got the sides, you've reached the sides, it'll just slowly pull to the center. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I have to say, a lot of gel artists, if they don't have a tip like this, or if they're not really focusing on that arch point, a lot of the gel nails can look very flat. And that can be a really breakage point. You don't want that. So you want to get that arch in there. No matter what nail you're doing, you're doing any type of nail, you've got to have your apex in there to keep that strength. So once you get it the way you're like, now I wasn't paying attention, so it's a little bit heavy on this end, but if you slide it back a little, so hold it upside down, you can even go like this. This is for this camera here. You can even take your brush a little, if you get impatient, you just take your brush along it a little bit and move it and you're sort of coaxing it to go where you want. Okay, that's a bit bumpy. To be honest with you, I probably have a little too much product on there. <laughs> okay, once you feel you have it where you want it, nuke it. Okay, so looking down the barrel at it, you can see, you can almost see the dimension right through. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but you can see how thin the end is still. See that? Very thin end, but you can see the arch point in here. Turning it upside down really is a huge advantage. Look at that beautiful arch. And then you can see the clarity through it. Okay, so now I'm gonna find, like with any gel, you definitely wanna remove, and this refers to hybrid gel, you're sometimes known as poly gel, which is a brand, but all your hybrid gels, any gel, polish, any of that, you wanna remove that dispersion layer. Just get rid of that dispersion layer. That'll happen with any gel. Any gel that you're working with will have a dispersion layer. Okay, remove that. Now, before I file, I do recommend you wear a mask when you're filing. And especially with gel, not that there's anything more wrong with gel, it just has a um, finer, there can be finer fibers, finer bits of dust. So make sure you're wearing a mask. So it floats around more? Yeah, it's actually, it's a little bit more airborne. Acrylic's a little bit heavier, so it falls more. So I find um, gel can be a little bit finer, so it really dances around. So protect yourself. Okay, so whenever I'm filing, I always, just a quick little run through, I just start with my sides first, get the shape that I want. And, oh, that bit is not going to cut through anything. Okay, when you're filing, I had the mandrel bit in there, but that's only for good, you know, smoothing, basically, not for taking any product away. So for rotations per minute, about 6 to 12 or so for sculpting, whatever you're comfortable with. So if you made the first layer nice and thin, then you won't file through to your flowers and ruin your design. That's where it starts. <laughs> if you're filing through and hitting your flowers, that means your first layer was too thick. Okay, so now that I've got my shape pretty much set where I want it to be, I'm just gonna fine tune it here with my medium file, just making it, just perfecting that shape free edge, right? Go underneath. Okay, now once you've determined your shape, just a little filing tip, I go over the whole thing with an arbor band. So the arbor band doesn't make it smoother as in um, a smooth surface. It makes it smoother and even as in when you look at the whole nail, there's no mm -mm -mm bumps, okay? So it's not smooth to touch. It's just smooth in its whole shape of the nail. 
So I'll just quickly go over it. That's just a pro tip, and I do it with every single nail that I'm finished with. So I just gently go back and forth over the whole thing evenly to make sure I'm making it a smooth surface. Not a smooth finish, just a smooth surface. and go back and forth. It will save you a lot of time and make it super smooth. Okay, now we're ready for the top coat. Okay, and I'll just remove the dust. Just make sure you get into the cuticles to get that dust out of there. And you can go underneath too, if you like. That's an optional thing. Okay, now you wanna put the top coat on? Always so satisfying. Look at that. It is so pretty. And you know, I just went with yellow and blue. I just felt in the mood. I thought the color combination was absolutely gorgeous. But as you can see with this little bottle of flowers, I mean, the color combinations would be endless, right? I love to see those little veins in there. The detail is so gorgeous. Really three-dimensional. You can see that? Oh, yeah. I, <gasps> I didn't know you it. could really see that through the camera. Because in real life, it's very much like that. Yeah, yeah. But you can actually see that, eh? Yeah, like the yellow flower over top of the blue. And cameraman's like looking at everything via the camera. He's looking at all the cameras so he can see it. Wow, I didn't know you could actually see that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Looks very cool. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest. Okay, I've completely filed and finished them. I've even top coated them. Let's check out the reveal shots. I don't think I can ever get sick of flowers in nails. I love flowers and nails. If you want to check out a different type of flower, I make one with acrylic. Yep, you can make flower petals with acrylic. It's a 3D flower. Also, a beautiful use of yellow. Check this video out. <laughs>